Here is the Fallout 4 monitor and I am ready to do the texturing and I'm hopefully going to be able to do it all in this video. First thing I want to show you is that I have assigned materials to the various parts. So for example, this part is called the case. This is the front. This is the screen border and that's the screen. These are the knobs. Just and this stuff here is metal that includes all of that and these are the keys now that's going to enable me to texture this a little easier by having separate texture sets in substance painter and it also means that each separate material allows me to uh, use the entire uv grid for just that material so for example if we have a look at the screen border here and I come in you can see this there are no seams on this I used smart UV project and then I pack the islands for the front I did the same thing for the metal I did the same thing and that's why you'll see all these little pieces and that's one of the features of smart UV project is it really breaks it up like that keys and now if I come to the knobs you'll see this I did add now these had a subdivision surface and of course another thing that I did is I would go merge by distance and hopefully there's nothing and I applied that I put a seam right here and that helps me when I unwrap this it creates these things here all right and often what I would do is I would take that and I would scale it up in that one or I would scale them together so they're exactly the same and that helps me to put a material or a texture and substance painter right there so those had one little seam I selected it and I pressed U unwrap and then I packed them so it's not smart UV project now the part that I had the most difficulty was with was this and I have put some seams in this and I tried it a couple of times with seams at slightly different parts to see how it would unwrap and this worked the best for me it wasn't always ideal smart UV project did not work very well and so this is what I have so this is the entire UV space or I mean reasonably I could take these pieces and expand them and, and stuff but I I figured that was gonna be good enough hopefully so I've unwrapped it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about unwrapping. It's sort of a personal journey. And again, what I would suggest to people, if you make something like this, you of course have to unwrap it in order for the textures to work properly. And then I would say, if you uh, don't know anything about unwrapping, I would start with Smart EV Project or Cube Project and see how it goes to bring you know like bring this piece into substance painter and try adding a material and see how it looks until things start to work and uh, and that's really the 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 secret of it um you can't say to yourself oh i'm going to unwrap this so it lays flat you know that whole analogy of you cut it with scissors and it lays flat some of these things are very difficult to imagine where you would cut to lay it flat all right so uh, we'll talk maybe someday about about uh, um, ways to unwrap it and, and things to think about but for now this is what I have all right and what I would now do is I would select it all and export it as an FBX let's go into substance painter and talk about that now so I need to bring my model in I'll click new I'll choose OpenGL for blender although I doubt I'm going to be going back into blender with this I've done a number of videos where you export the materials and you hook them up it's very simple um, if you have any trouble or you need to know about that let me know and I can point you in the direction of some videos where I've done that all right 
Follow for terminal unwrapped and open. Give it a second and it will load the model. You'll also see over here texture set lists. I've got all my materials, my case front, the keys, the knob, the metal screen and screen border. All right. In order to add materials to Substance Painter, I have to bake the mesh maps. So I click on Texture Set Settings and I scroll down, Bake Mesh Maps. I will do this at 2K, Uncheck ID, I don't need that, and I'm going to bake. Now this is going to take a while, so I'll pause the video. All right, the model is baked, or the maps are baked. Have a quick look around your model, and I do see a problem, and it's got me frustrated again that which really means I'm gonna have to go back unwrap again make sure that I pack the islands and then I'm gonna have to do this again so I am going to go do that and we'll come back hopefully to this point where that is fixed I'm gonna come in here and I've selected that I'm gonna press M merge by distance I got nothing there I don't care about this modifier let's try that again Put an island margin of 0 0.03 and use smart UV project. Pack. We get the same thing. I don't think there's anything else that's causing a problem. So maybe what I'll do is I will, um, yeah, that's unwrap. I will take the whole thing. Maybe I will export again the actual FBX and overwrite that, come back in here, go project configuration, select, that's it there, open, click OK, and I have to bake again. So I'm going to do that. I think I will bake, uh, let's try baking at 1024 and see how it goes if it, it goes a little bit quicker it is going quicker and just to get a sense of how that looks i can then bake again at 2k so that is the troubled spot right there but that's something that you need to do is to have a look at your model and see how well i mean this is this is the uv test that i was talking about all right this is quite a bit quicker ah now look at that, that is much better, but is there another problem? This is an area where I tend to get a scene. All right, well, maybe I can go ahead with what I've done and uh, just do some work, I don't see why not. I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing and we're gonna get started I, uh, on, the, uh, on the case. Now, I said in my little vlog that I was going to use a smart material, this AC material. This was created when I made the air conditioners in, um, in previous videos. I think in the first air conditioner video, uh, it was the air conditioner inspired by the, uh, the video game The Last of Us. And I created this smart material. I'm going to drag that over to the layers and let that just drop on there. I'll open it up it's not very complicated but I'm not going to go over how I made it now I'll link you to the video where I made it and you can watch that and then if you like it you can use it let me just say another couple of things about substance painter and smart materials um, some of the smart materials of course come with substance painter some of them I created a smart material is a great thing to try dropping on your model after you have attempted to un unwrap it because many of them are rather complicated, um, they really will show very quickly if you have problems with seams. Um, because sometimes if you're building up a material or just using a material itself, it doesn't always show the problem. And you may not find the problem until down, down the road. And so I often will start with a smart material and just look to see if I have a problem and that may not be that much of a problem anyhow so I've dropped that on and this is kind of the effect that I'm going to go for but maybe I'll come in here and here where it says dirt edges all right it's got the main layer it's got a black mask and then it's got the generator here you come into the generator and here see it says use triplanar 
I'm going to click that and that will redistribute the texture um, in a tri planar way it sort of projects it from three angles and it often will get rid of seams so if you are having problems with seams that's something to always try but some of these smart materials are so complicated that it's very hard to find where to make that change but anyway uh, that has helped me and I'm also going to look at um, increasing that now I may have some sharpness along here and you know what I, it doesn't really bother me but I could paint over that I could talk about that later we can add a bit more grunge and we can adjust some of these values and I did this when I did uh, my video on creating that I don't really feel like making too many changes let's see let's let's look at the curvature and bring it out a little bit Nah, I don't like that um, if I increase the contrast they get very sharp and I'm gonna bring that down again because I'll be putting some other stuff on there all right that's kind of my base layer and just look around and see if there's any real trouble spots but that eh, looks all right i guess okay so that's my ac material i'll leave it i'll leave it called that for now let's go ahead and think about maybe putting edges uh, edge 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 where uh, i want to actually have that outside of that so here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to use just color and I'll put a black mask and a generator and we'll use metal edges and that'll get rid of some of that right there. And I've got a white line going through on some of these edges and I'm just going to play with this a little bit. It's not very evident on this, and it may not really be that useful, but it will be more evident on some of the other parts. So just for the moment, I'm going to leave it. When I say for the moment, it means I'll probably forget all about it and <laughs> forget to change it. All right, uh, let's add some dirt. So I'll come over here to color and roughness. I'll bring, I'm going to bring the roughness all the way up. And the color, I'm just going to go for dark. I'm not even looking for brown these days. Add a black mask. I'll use a generator for this. I might try a mask and i'm just going to bring down the dirt level what i want is that dirt to go in the grooves uh, in there and in there and i'm happy with that i don't need it all over the body of of this although i would mind a little bit and here we could try try planer and see if it if it does anything that we need i just did it and it's it's fine like that um, however, however, I'm going to delete that and have the black mask and come over to smart masks and I'm going to type in dirt and that'll filter it to this and I'm going to try a couple of different smart masks and see if I like, I don't care for that one, uh, edge dirty, nope, I mean that's the somebody made a comment uh that i i like uh, i like dusty dirty models and that's not always the case but uh yeah, i do but keep in mind that this comes from an apocalyptic uh world this this model and so it is with you know if you see the real thing it it's really dirty in the uh in the game that's kind of interesting so now what i would probably do i might lower that or I might come in here and play with the balance or a combination. What I want to do, however, is I want to copy this over to other layers. So this may not be a good one to use, but uh, I may go with that just for now and we'll see. Okay, so I've got edges, dirt. I may go back and change that, but we're gonna leave that for the time being and i want to put some grunge um and i'm thinking of of this actually i may have height there as well just light roughness whatever like that i'm going to add a black mask and a fill 
and in the fill I'm going to look for grunge. I'm just going to type grunge and just look for one that I, I kind of like. Now because that's white it's going to be hard to see so let's let's change that so you see that. So I've got more of that browny stuff in there whether I like that or not and what I was thinking was I would drop the height so we get this um, broken kind of scratched almost look this may not be the best grunge to use to to see that there here I'll I'll uh, accentuate it there starts to look a little bit like concrete however um, but I kind of I kind of like it that just may be too much I don't care about the underside I'm not going to see that I just want this broken up and it is a little blurry and that's because of how I bake the mesh maps and also the fact that I'm going to want to switch this to 2k I'm not gonna do that right now and that'll make it look a little sharper so I'm gonna leave that again for the time being and we'll see if I come back to it or not and I don't know that I'm gonna like that color however I'm gonna leave it like that for the moment now let's let's leave that and let's take all of this and copy it and come over to the metal and I'm going to delete that and I'm going to paste that on and then we can we can make adjustments to this let's hide that grunge that puts it on all these things including the bolts and on the back here well that looks kind of neat actually maybe I can just leave that on there this is looking a little a little too much for this piece I think maybe um, I don't really want to change that too much maybe I'll come in here to what I originally changed just bring the level down a little bit it's not going to do that much let's have a look at these bolts yeah, I don't mind them. Once I put the front material on, it won't look, look so stark. And I may, I may tone this down, but I may not. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that for the time being. So I've got all these layers all already on there, and uh, let's just build this up little by little. Let's try looking at the front. I'm going to type in PL for plastic and find this plastic grainy. This is the effect I'm going to go for, similar to this. I'm going to change this to triplanar. I'm going to change the scale to four or five. Let's try five. I want that, which you won't even really see. Let's turn that off, unless you know, unless you really have the light in the right place. All right, so that's the plastic grainy. Now the color, I want a little bit, I want the color sort of like that, I think. And I'm going to add some of the dirt on here. So I'm actually going to take all of these, although I don't think the edges are going to do much on here because the edges are underneath. So we will have a look at this. I'm just going to paste those on there. And now I'm getting the effect that I want. This dirty, grungy. And now you can see this stuff here was that that uh, grunge that I put on here, which isn't as evident on here, but here it looks kind of like rust, dirt, and that. And I, I like it. And this is sort of the apocalyptic look that I'm, I'm, I'm going for. So I'm actually happy with that right there. Whether I stick with that color, I don't, I don't know. Okay. So there's the front. There's lots more to do. Uh, let's just build it up, though. Let's go to the knobs. Uh, for the knobs, let's try plastic mat. So that's just a material that comes with Substance Painter. And let's change the color to a dark like black. 
and this should have some variation in it a little bit I, I think uh, what I might do is um, so I've got maybe let's try a filter and this matte uh, finish it, it's I'll bring the scale up you're not gonna see it very well but it's there so we'll have this and maybe we'll decrease the roughness a little bit um, we are going to add that dirt and stuff in a moment but first of all I want to make the ends white I think I mentioned that when I did the UVs and so I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to change this color to a lighter color and I'm going to add a black mask come over here to my polygon fill tool and you can see the circle there I'll go into uh, UV and just click there uh, is that too intense I think it might be now that's all going to get covered in a moment but that was the benefit of putting the seam where I did all right let's go back to the case then and grab all these materials again copy them and just paste them and they've gone on and we've got some of that grunge we've got some of that the the edges and that dirty dusty and I'm happy with that I'm happy with that okay now all of this is kind of the material I want to have on the the screen border here uh, with the exception of the white part here so I'm going to take all of this and copy those over to my screen border paste them but this one here I think I can delete that later and I just want I, I want all that grime I want to adjust this now to my liking and take the metal edges I don't want too much I bring that down and I also don't want too much of this grunge so just decrease the balance I wanted a little blocker like that all right let's keep building it up now and have a look at that screen I'm going to use for in this case this plastic gloss I'm going to change the color to a, a dark gray and I'm going to increase the roughness a little bit but I'm going to swing the metallic all the way up and that's kind of the effect that I'm going to go for but of course we're going to add some and I don't think edges will work I'm going to try just copying this dirt and I may have to change the mask for this let's see what this is like okay that's a little bit uh, I wonder if a dusty look would be better let's let's do this and then that may not have been the best mask for this but just maybe that's okay come back to here and um, that may be what I go for when I uh, put the textures on them uh, the, the some typing on there I might uh, have it a little bit less okay now my, everything is pretty much on there except for the keys I want to do something well no let's do the keys let's just do the keys what to do for the keys um, I think I'm gonna go for this mat again change the color to like an orange or something like that yeah like that um, and then grab all of this stuff again edges dirt grunge copy that try those on the keys and then make adjustments as necessary so for example I don't really like the edges So in addition, in addition to adjusting the wear, I mean, you can, you know, change the grunge amount. I think I need to have a look at this. 
Roughness there. Maybe I don't like. I, I I do want some dirt and grunge on there. I think for what I'm doing, that's probably okay. I'm gonna do a a, a different dirt. Let's try. Um, let's try that. That that makes them show up a bit more. And I can leave that. No, you know what? On these ones, let's see what happens if I change the grunge color to a dusty kind of thing. And I come in here and maybe I try a different, a different grunge. And then, um, where'd it go? Right, did I get rid of it? And then just drop it down like that. So they're just a little dusty. Now, of course, you can paint on here as well. Uh, we may be doing some of that later on. Okay. Um, I think I, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, let's say we did want to paint. Uh, not there. Um, I will add a paint layer here and I'll come to my brushes and I'll choose dirt. Dirt one. And let's have just a quick look. See, I'm painting some dirt in there. And sometimes that, that's nice. Or I'll just make a big brush and just like tap it. Do a little bit of this and that. All right, but I'm not going to do that. Let's do like this. There we go. That's all I, all I need to do. And of course, I can do that on the front. I can do that everywhere. In fact, I'm going to be doing that. I'll do that right now on the metal. I think I'm going to add just a paint layer. And I'm going to make it just a color. And I'm going to make it almost black. And... Uh, Let's, let's uh, have a look at this. All right. That's, that's fine with me. That's more what I'm looking for. There we go. Let's do some alpha work on this. On the case. Let's come to the layers. I'm going to come above and I'm going to use a paint layer. And I'm going to use height and color. And for height, I'm going to drop it down, I think, all the way. And I think I'm going to use color and I want a dark color here. I'm going to switch to orthographic for this. I'm going to look down from the top. I'm going to turn on symmetry. And I'm going to use a basic hard brush at zero point. Let's try zero point three and see how this works. If that's too small. Okay, I don't want it quite there. I'm going to make it zero point four. come from about the edge of the screen to there and I'm going to put something else in here I think that might be okay sometimes you know if you do it on camera I don't want to take all day um, that may be okay let's go back to symmetry and orthographic and look from the front and just see if I need to touch this up not really but I'll, I'll do a little bit and hopefully this will improve when we up the resolution and just to see where it ends i'm happy about where it ends that's fine with me so i'm going to do that let's do another one let's look from the top and go to my alphas and choose lines and this one here bring that up and let's have a look at just stamping that down there 
Now I'm putting a black color in. I'm going to use uh, anchor points to get some dirt in there and even the edge detail. Uh, and so I'm happy with that. I was thinking I'm going to put those in here. That's on the front. So that's going to be it for the moment on the case. So, yeah. All right, so let's turn that off. Go back into perspective. Make sure we're saving periodically. And let's have a look at this. I'm going to call this alphas. Let's put some alpha details on the front. Let's create a paint layer, call it alphas. And I'm going to bring it down under here. I'm going to create a fill layer. I'm going to call this anchor points. I'm going to add an anchor point to this and a black mask. And on this layer here, I'm going to switch to height. And I'm going to change that to pass through. And that's going to allow me to link a number of uh, generators and have it affect my alpha layer. Haven't, I've got nothing on my alpha layer yet, but I'm going to set this up because I like to work this way sometimes. Click on the middle edge generator and over here, micro details, make sure that says true or on. Choose the anchor point and switch this to height. So there's one. And I also want some dirt. So I'm going to click there and come up to micro details, make sure it says true there. And down here on micro height, choose the anchor point and switch this to height. Okay, come back to the alphas. Now, you don't see anything yet because we haven't added anything. Let's switch on symmetry and orthographic, snap to the front. And with these lines, I'm gonna scale them down and I'm gonna go on opposite sides of this thing here and I'm gonna click. And already it's got the details that I want. I just want to look at this layer, the heights down all the way. If I turn the color off, just Alt-click, I just want to see what I get. Yeah, okay, I'll leave the color on. All right, so I'm going to click there and I'll get them on both sides and it'll look like that stuff is on the inside as well. All right, so I want that there. And I also want a line going across. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus, I think, just on this. And I am going to switch to, uh, maybe I'll do my brush. Basic hard brush, snap to orthographic, so it's, I get a straight line, scale it way down, and just try to go across like that. A little bit big still, so how about 0 0.7, I'll try that. Let's see what that looks like here. Yeah, I think something like that is probably going to be okay. All right, perspective view. All right, so it's got some of the edge wear and it's got some of that grunge. It's got the dirt, so it's got what I, what I need. So that's multiple anchor points. All right, cool. Let's do a little bit of text on here for these knobs. So uh, I'm going to create a new layer. And I think I will, uh, I'll start it at the top so that the stuff doesn't block it. And we'll use um, just color actually. I'll click on color and we'll use a, a, a light color, like almost like white. And we'll come to alphas, search for font and maybe this one here and we'll just write something like high and low let's try that although i think i may do it in orthographic so I'll just make it a little bit bigger let's see if i have high there i think i'll try it and then i'll try dragging it below some of the layers actually i'm just going to do it like this high there and and low over here and I'll also do something like uh, insert key card and just make that smaller so it doesn't fit decrease the size here and then increase the size here just so there's a little bit of text on here now let's try dragging this down there and seeing if we get anything that is uh, 
yeah that's fine there it's a little buried under and I do want it to be a little bit visible all right so we got text that's probably the only text we're going to do So the final thing is really a little bit of text on here, on this front, on this screen. All right, and to do that, let's try bringing in a paint layer and uh, just going for color, and I'll change it to a sort of a green color. We'll start with that. And I've created an alpha of some, of some text. If I can find it, textures there. I just called it computer code. Just something quick to test this out. Where is computer code? There it is. I think. Bring that in as an alpha to the current pro session. There it is. Scale it up. drop that in there like that and you can do anything you <laughs> you need to at that point you could make it glow if that's what you needed but I'm going to do that I'm going to switch the uh, environment lighting again you know you could take as long as you need to tweak these textures I don't have that much time on video but that is generally what I envisioned for this uh, fallout for terminal all right so thanks very much for watching the modeling and the texturing and we'll see you again in another video